The topspin is the most important strike in modern table tennis. A technical analysis of forehand topspins can be done from different viewing perspectives. In this video we discuss the advantages and disadvantages of the different viewing angles as well as more than 10 important criteria for a good forehand topspin. As a consequence, we can do future technical analyses with more quality and therefore improve the efficiency of our topspins. From the sideward perspective and extension of the baseline of the table, we have a good view on most of the criteria. But maybe for criteria such as the end of the swing sidewards and the free arm position and movement, we can find better perspectives. Freezed images and slow motions can help to find small deficits in one or more criteria. In this still image, we can see that the index finger is on the lowest rim of the blade and the top of the finger looks over the edge of the racket. This has a negative influence on the ball feeling because in the skin of the finger there are hundreds of receptors that tell the brain how the ball was hit. It also supports the appearance of the common mistake that the blade angle is open during the forward swing and balls are hit too hard or go over the table as you can see in this example. In this perspective we can also see the criteria timing of ball hit and height of backswing. In this case the player goes too deep backwards with a racket on an arriving block ball with a little bit topspin. As a consequence some of his balls go over the table because his movement plane is too vertical. But bear in mind that this criteria is also dependent on the kind of material that is used and on the technique philosophy. So there are differences between European and Asian players for example. From perspective 2, sidewards in extension of the net, most important criteria can also be seen very good. Especially criteria such as the grip, the rotation of the shoulder axis, the hip impulse, the blade inclination and the movement plane. In this picture we can see that the player uses a quite neutral grip so that the edge of the blade is not bended towards thumb or index finger. In this picture we can see that the shoulder axis during backswing is too inclined which can be the reason for the too deep racket during backswing what we already discussed. From perspective 3 which is frontal to the player, we can observe some criteria not so clear such as the foot position, the weight transfer and the timing during the ball hit. On the other side, we can clearly see the end of the swing in relation to the middle of the body and the rotation of the shoulder axis. Also in this perspective, we can observe the two inclined shoulder axis in combination with a racket that is too deep during backswing. When we zoom in in this perspective we can see that the player does not have his index finger on the blade during backswing which is not optimal for the following forward swing. From perspective number 4 most of the technique criteria can be seen very good or good except the end of the backswing because it is hidden behind the body. From this view angle the left foot can clearly be seen so that the criterion weight transfer from the right to the left foot can be assessed quite good. This player shows deficits in this criterion because he pulls the left foot backwards during the forward swing which means that there is too much weight on the right foot and there is a lack of weight transfer. In comparison of the body height of this player at the end of the backswing and the end of the forward swing it becomes clear that there is a vertical body movement during the forward swing. This is not optimal for a topspin that is played after a block because the impulse should be more horizontal to create more speed or power to put more pressure on the opponent. 
From perspective number 5, which is an extension of the baseline of the table, most technique criteria can be observed except the height and extent of the backswing and the extent of the sideward swing at the end of the forward swing. We can clearly see the already mentioned mistake of pulling the left foot backwards during the forward swing. In this still image we see that during ball contact the weight is still complete on the right foot which is not good for a weight transfer that should increase the impulse at the moment of ball hit. From perspective number 6 that is behind the player we can clearly see most of the technique criteria. But the position and movement of the left free arm and the ball contact in relation to the frontal body axis cannot so clearly be observed. This perspective is the best position to analyze the criterion weight transfer. We can see that this player lifts his left foot during the forward movement, which is not optimal because he cannot use the additional impulse that is created by the weight transfer for more power in his strikes. His body weight remains on his right foot. This is also negative in situations when he must move towards the deep forehand side, because he can only let his body weight fall outwards instead of pushing actively with his left foot. This becomes also clear in this freezed image during the phase of ball contact. To sum up the technical checklist for the forehand topspin after a block for this player, there are some criteria that should be improved. Some are quite neutral, which means they could be better but don't have too much negative impact on the strike quality and some criteria are good. Thanks for watching, have fun during training and please subscribe and ring the bell.